you know, uh, thank you uh, for Dr. Gilderman coming tonight. And uh, I was thinking uh, in introducing him, uh, what is one of the common traits that we'll all be shared in cities all across the country? And uh, what, what hit me was there's an amazing amount of accommodation made for the office. And we, we build a store with a restaurant, and uh, there's almost as much space devoted to the cars outside as there are the people inside. Uh, the tight fiscal budgets that we're living with uh, are stretched to, to accommodate paving and the maintenance of the service just so cars can drive around. Um, the enhanced mobility <coughs> that the cars allow us, I believe, lets us live further away from our jobs schools, uh, entertainment, and uh, destinations, that type of thing. The cost of the infrastructure uh, in a car-centered society funnels taxes away from more desirable, enriching possibilities. And uh, the gravitational pull of new suburbs diverts uh, needed uh, capital from the original part of the city that uh, was the the seed that let the suburb grow. And um, we have to constantly maintain, as city officials, we have to constantly maintain, the city in general have to maintain uh, acreage for more demanding requirements for clean water, safe streets, and other amenities and necessities of just city life. And the cost of outward development, if redirected and incentivized, focused on redevelopment, of our inner, denser, original city footprint uh, would lead to a more environmentally responsible, sustainable model for growth and, pro growth and prosperity. <clears throat> we need to think long, more long term. We need to, some would say, we need to think out of the box. We need, we need to think innovatively, creatively. We need to think about how to work big, uh, the next big thing to the city to uh, make our city better up to higher heights. That's what some would say, and I'm not on that bandwagon. But, uh, so it's good that we have Dr. John Gilderbloom with us. A few years ago, Dr. Gilderbloom was actually declared, <clears throat> this guy right here, one of the 100 top urban thinkers. That's, that's a true trait. And uh, you say so. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's so. So. And uh, just because he's a professional thinker, uh, it doesn't absolve us amateurs of thinking about how to make our city better and how to improve our environment. So I don't know exactly what uh, Dr. Gilderblum is going to say tonight, um, but whatever he says, I'm sure it will make us think. So with that, I give you Dr. Jones. Thank you. Is this pose better, best? Or is <laughs> Hi, I'm really glad that you got to uh, invite me and so on. It's, uh, speak here. I'm going to do two, two talks. One is a short one and then because we got this master in terms of YouTube video and so on. But I want to get the one way, two way street, put that to rest and so on. And get that done. And then I'm going to talk about 10 things New Albany can do to regenerate this downtown and make it a pleasant, great place for prosperity, for health, for safety, for justice, and um, an equitable treatment of all people. So. Um, I also want to thank Josh, uh, who's uh, my, my graduate student, and he's a wonderful guy. He's going to be uh, pushing the pushing the, uh, the arrow key. So, so one way to fix our downtown neighborhoods. Uh, recently, there's this continuous talk, uh, in, especially in Louisville. When I got here, people always say, "I hate going downtown. I hate going downtown." And, uh, and I even went the wrong way on one-way street just getting here, by the way. I, I turned off and I, I saw the New Albany library, library and I thought, oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. And I ended up going up the one, one way. And, um, and there was Josh, and Josh is going like this, don't go this way. <laughs> and, um, and so I almost got killed coming here on the new one-way streets, which would have um, proven the point, right, of uh, the need to change these one-way streets to two-way. But um, fortunately, I, I, I lived through that event so on. Um, and uh, we're very delighted. Uh, I'm an empiricist. I'm, an, I'm a scientist. I uh, uh, was very generous to say that um, there was an international poll of people, and I was shocked 
that um, I was there, um, one of the 50 uh, top urbanists, and I just, uh, it's pretty cool. You see that your work is getting, it's, it's been seen as re replicable, uh, valid, uh, has lots of reach and lots of relevance and so on. And, um, I am going to, uh, and it has to go to this international symposium of 125 nations uh, in Moscow, of all places, and uh, to talk about <laughs> what we're doing here in Louisville and New Albany. Jeff Speck is a friend of mine, he's a colleague, um, and uh, I, I truly respect his work. I thought it would be just great to, to get him to come here as well. But people used to talk about, uh, when I first got here 27 years ago, how they hated downtowns. And people you would usually assume it's downtown Louisville, they'd always go, it's a code word for low-income um, blacks. And that's the reason why they don't want to go downtown. But really, I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever had the experience of being downtown Louisville or, or New Albany across the river and actually gone the wrong way on a one-way street Let's see the hands of Hannah, Hannah, filmmaker, film. Come on, Hannah. Put the hands up, put the hands up, put the hands up. Yeah, no, no, not over there, over here. There he goes, he goes, he goes. And, and, and it is simply terrifying. It, it, it's not a friendly place to be. And uh, it's not how streets were supposed to be, but the engineers got hold of this idea. Henry Ford, of course, was one of the people who said hated cities, absolutely hated cities and wanted to get people out, but it was good for him and, and good for General Motors. It was good for America's General Motors. And to push people out fast in a quick way. And that, and that was the mindset in terms of thinking. And I really think that when people say they hope, hate going downtown uh, Louisville, that's the experience. They're afraid of going down and terrorized. Can I use that word terrorized? How many of you absolutely had a meltdown of terror where you're going down um, First Street or um, or Fifth Street, and you're going the wrong way, and all of a sudden you realize there's, there's an army of cars, caravan coming down at you. It's very frightening. And I believe it's not about race that people are afraid of going downtown. It's afraid of being killed, you know, literally, by these uh, these cars and so on. And even the uh, the other day, uh, somebody was just not paying attention and went the wrong way. And it happens about once a year. I've seen cars flip and, and so on. One of the things that we um, have discovered, speaking of accidents, is the fact that you have multi-lane one-way streets, you are more two times more likely to die on a one-way multi-lane one-way streets, either as a pedestrian or a bicyclist or um, or a car driver, because you don't know what's going on. It's not family friendly. And if you ever look, and I'm going to show you some slides here of the streets, is that you notice that all of a sudden the people um, sort of evaporate on this multi-lane one-way street. They're not people walking around actively pursuing it, their lives and so on. So that's one of the points. And so I got together my students uh, and we decided to do a report and uh, this is sort of the results of this. And, uh, I think that we actually had even a, a medical doctor, a pediatrician nurse, who was fed up with just treating injured people and wanted to learn how to get to the symptoms, instead of being reactive, let's be proactive. And I think what I'm going to present to you is that the conversion of multi-lane one-way streets is pro-family, it's pro-children, it's pro-bike safety, it's pro-small business people, it's pro-property values where you have your nest eggs. And you're going to see some statistics here which show that basically your nest egg, if you live on a multi-lane one-way street, it's just absolutely cut in half in terms of its real value. And do, do people want that? Our single largest investment today is the home, is the American home. And you'll notice even the hypocrisy of the suburbs is that they're purposely designed to sort of caravan around there, the two-lane and, and so on. They're designed structurally to slow traffic down and to have children out there playing, um, and it's always great to see the basketball hoops out there and so on. But you won't see that on one way. We, we, we could do another study too, if the Albany Council wanted to do it, is the number of uh, basketball hoops, for 
example, on one way versus two way streets. And I'm sure you you know, for this $10 study we could do, we find more basketball groups on the two way slow streets and so on. It's a place to play, it's a place to see people. You want to get people out on the street, you want people to get people on the porches looking out and checking things out. Um, one of the great things about when you think about Louisville, west and east Louisville, is that west Louisville used to look a lot like the Highlands. It was two-way streets, same kind of architecture design, same closeness to the downtown, and so on. But they absolutely ruined it. And what is the hurry of going from 7th Street to 44th Street in Louisville when you're, all you're going to is a toxic suit of chemical factories all there? What engineer was thinking that we got to get people there as fast as possible? And we know, and I think Jeff Speck has talked about this as well, is that the faster you go, okay, the faster you go in a car, the more likely you're going to have a substantial injury if you get into an accident. You hit a bicyclist, you hit a pedestrian, you hit somebody else. Um, you have a survival rate, survival rate of 25% uh, 20, right now if you're going on a 45 mile per hour street. And that's how they design. These multi-level multi streets are designed to go faster and quicker. Versus if you're going 25 miles an hour, your survival rate being hit by a car is about 80%. We as humans can run around 20 miles per hour. And that's how our build, body was built, to take falls and everything like that. But it wasn't built for 20 miles an hour and so on. So, I think it's very exciting, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm struck here talking that there's no Republicans here. Because the Republicans are always talking about, there you are, there you are. <laughs> stand, stand up if you count. But they're, but they're always talking about the little guy, the business person, the little gal, the big gal, um, and so on. And it's so important to see that people want to build in, in, in the inner city. So, here we go. Um, one simple way to, to, to fix our neighborhoods, and they're doing this um, across the nation. There's this movement. Uh, Andres Duaney, the partner of Jeff, Jeff's back in that beautiful book, Suburban Nation, they estimate that roughly one of our cities have converted uh, their streets to two-way streets because they're trying to, to create more sustainability, higher property values, higher valuation, and, and it's good for the city. Um, and that's it. So the complete street policy, this notion of complete street policy, is the idea that everyone, regardless of their age or ability, pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists, transit riders, baby carriages, skaters, and should all share the street. Now, streets are the lifeblood of cities. Simply put, it is where life occurs. This is a Jane Jacobs thing. She came up with this in 1959. A housewife who was really angry about seeing a multiple freeway, multi-lane freeway going through Greenwich Village and creating havoc and seeing what kind of damage was done by that. And we see that, and this is the work I do with Billy, um, Billy Riggs. And by the way, Billy Riggs is a New Albany resident. He was born and raised here. His family is very prominent. And we hope to get him back here uh, to Louisville to teach here at the University of Louisville. That's my dream. He's my writing partner. Um, it's where citizens interact with each other and the policies of the locality. The streets of a city are a significant determinant whether the neighborhood is hostile towards pedestrians or is home to multiple modes of transportation. And uh, here are some of my, my favorite uh, pictures of people. And here's a tale of two streets. Now, we just got this published. We have another article that's coming out, too, which will just trump you know, all the other critics and so on. This is a micro study of two streets, First and Brook, in Old Louisville. And I used to live on First Street. And anyone familiar with First Street know that 
well, maybe you don't want to know about this, but when I first moved there, I bought a house in the Victorian in 1988 on First Street, beautiful three-story Victorian, $36,000, $36,000. And the neighborhood was a wreck, you know? And I never really connected it up, but seeing these one-way streets going up and down, I thought, well, we'll change it. We'll just not even thought it. And of course, when we had the uh, neighborhood meeting and so on, they would talk about the prostitution, they would talk about the gun runners, they would talk about the drug addicts and the hot sales. And in fact, we were there within one year, our house was broken into, and all this stuff was stolen from us. And they were selling it right on the first street two blocks away. <laughs> and um, so in a way, multi-lane one-way streets is a marketing tool for criminals. <laughs> Think of it. Hmm. Multi-lane, one-way streets is a great place if you're a criminal involved in vice, drugs, and so on. You're doing that. And it became a serious point. And this thing that the citizens group coming down there shouting at the prostitutes or the drug dealers, it just wasn't working. And it's dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous. The multi-lane, one-way street is, is a great place for marketing because you're going down the street, And there you are uh, on Brook Street. And the reason why this street is great if you're selling drugs, or you're selling sex, or you're selling hot goods, is because you're going down here, and you can stop here, make your deal, right? And then the other cars can just go around. And that's why I've always noticed empirically, every city I've ever been to, or lived in, San Francisco, Houston, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, Louisville, uh, even Lexington, St. Louis, Indianapolis, and of course Cincinnati, which is usually seen as one of the best cases of ruination of the downtown. <clears throat> but the problem is, is that when you convert it back to a two-way street like this, there it is, isn't that great? Google photography. Is that if you stop in the middle of the street to do a transaction and so on, and there's two-way streets, it's hard to do a transaction. People will honk at you, people get annoyed, or, you know, people will call the police now. They'll say, there's someone doing a drug deal. There's someone trying to pick up a 14-year-old prostitute, and so on. And so that's visually is, is, is how it works, and so on. Slow the streets down, and so on. Uh, one of the things is that uh, we found that when uh, there was two things that were exciting. I ran a, um, camp a campaign for David James. Uh, he's a policeman, uh, African American, um, he works at the University of Louisville. And when he ran, he ran a people's campaign. The other five candidates, some black, some white, uh, some gay, some straight, whatever. Um, had their platforms and so on. And I care very much about this neighborhood. And I talked to the um, candidates, and there was just one candidate, and I said, go for beautiful conversions of, to two-way streets. Run on a thing about lowering crime, improving businesses, improving property values, create a vision of a great neighborhood, the neighborhoods that we all like to fly out to with Santa Barbara or San Francisco or so on. But create a vision. And he ran on just putting out a flyer, you know, get it, go to Kinko's, put out the flyer and so on and so forth. And the other candidates were too scared. Too scared of Mayor Fisher and so on who wanted these one-way streets and so on. And he, and he ran as a populist. And guess what? He won. And now he's like an institutional figure. And, uh, and I think that uh, eventually he'll run for mayor as a, as a sort of grassroots people's candidate. So Mr. Baylor, you know, <laughs> great visions, great visions of, of a great neighborhood. So, so one of the things is that was great was we, we got to we got to do a scientific study, something that we learned in fourth grade or, or, or eighth grade or high school or college. Very simple. Let's look at before the conversions and let's look at after. 
broke it first. We were able to do that. And let's also look at the parallel streets of second and third, which have one-way streets, and see what's going on. And the results were pretty powerful. Um, collisions fell by 36% on Brook, 60% on First. Crime fell by 23%. Uh, increased calmer traffic, pedestrians and bike traffic. Business revenues went up. Property improvements went up. Property values went up 39%. And believe me, there's no one out there saying, oh my gosh, I need, you know, I need this one-way street. Uh, I need to get home quicker. And one of the things that we found by accident, we didn't expect this, and so that's what the great thing about doing scientific research, is that contrary to the engineering's thinking, the gods of engineering from the 40s and the 50s who engineered this deal, was that people started choosing to go down the two-way streets. And in fact, traffic actually increased on the two-way streets because it was more interesting. Houses were being uh, redone and fixed up. Uh, there was baby traffic out there and so on. How, uh, and it was just a more, and it was a safer place. People are choosing a safer place. That's why, for example, um, the bike lane uh, on the one-way streets have absolutely failed. Because, and it's too dangerous. I'm a bicyclist. I'm, you know, 50 pounds ago, I was, I, that's all I used, okay? but. When you're a bicyclist, you're always looking for safe streets. You don't, you don't need a bike lane. You can go on a, on a nice, calm, 25 mile per hour thing. And that's what people are looking for. They're looking for calmer, safer streets, and so on. And they don't necessarily want to do, they're not necessarily interested in cutting their commute time by 30 seconds and rushing home. And biologically, it's males who like to go different routes. They're, they're still from the caveman thinking a long time ago where they like to you know, sort of look for the look, look for the look for the meal, look for the look for the food and so on. They're scavengers. They're looking up and they like to go different ways and so on. But anyway, so first and Brook is a cool place. The place is just exploding. It's the hottest real estate market. Businesses have opened up and everything like that. And it's a great place. And if you have people on the street, you're always feeling much more safe. And and that was contrary to the thing. In other words, one of the arguments the engineers making is that for the money you've invested in the streets, there's not, a non, not, a, not enough volume there to justify it. And, and we found it just contrary to that. And that was Billy. That was Billy's contribution. Our latest research on East Breckenridge, Louisville, this study provides a further insight, is downtown community, 13 blocks, where uh, we looked at part of the East Breckenridge, which was one way part of it, which was two way. Another easy scientific experiment. And uh, that's it on the map. You all know where East Breckenridge is. It's two blocks. And this is Baxter. I live right here. And I just noticed these two way streets were just great. And all of a sudden you go to the one way street and you're going to see photographically the little things, photographs. Here we go. I'm get to the exciting part here. Uh, this is the 1400 block of uh, Breckenridge. And here it is, 1300 block of Breckenridge. Lots of trees you'll notice. Lots of, well, it's, it's a place where you'd want to walk around on a hot summer day. And then, of course, uh, right here you would see, uh, right here at the corner of Barrett and so on, you're starting to go into the, all of a sudden they said, let's make it one way. And it's like, who came first? Poor people or the one-way street? It's the one-way street that created the poverty there and ran it down. And then poor people came into, this, came into these neighborhoods and they got occupied that way. Here we go. One way. And this is now two blocks away from the two-way street. And look at look what happened. What happened to the trees? What happened to the businesses? On this side, you have total vacant lots, just gone. And we're going to continue driving down there. Keep keep on driving. Look at this. 
Look at the barrenness. Would you want to walk on a street like that, so barren, hot, everything like that? And of course, if you're going to walk, and we believe that this is a crime prevention measure, people want lower crime. Now, if you're going to walk, you want to have some shade there, and you also want to walk to, to go someplace, to go um, to a wonderful craft beer place in, in downtown <laughs> Albany and enjoy the flavor of the New Albany's beer company. Okay. And uh, this is more of it. Oh, look, they decided to put in, they knocked out all this. All this used to be Victorian homes right here. Housing valuation. Well, we were able to look here at the housing valuation. And uh, one of the things that this blur says to, to, uh, uh, to you all is that where there's two-way streets, housing valuation is much higher. Where there's one way, it's cut in half. It is an interesting thing about valuation and so on. You know, the taxes in terms of receipts go down as well. This is the 1400 block of Breckenridge. Look at those beautiful camel baths. Yeah. Well, there we go, back to the one-way street. You know, people, you know, and, and the other thing is on a one-way street, because you're going this way and there's no balance, you know, they would have traffic coming this way um, for, for, let's say, um, um, going home, commute traffic, and then other traffic, there'd be none. There's no balance. And one of the things that two-way streets is it creates a sense of balance to, to the road. And you feel like you can get away with things. And you feel like if you're a, a tagger or a graffiti artist or something like that, you can go out and just do this. Because you can see down there which way the cops are coming. We'll talk about cops later. Back to the 1400 block. Beautiful. Back to the one-way street. That's kind of... And that's the environmental message. The environmental message is this block is dangerous. We don't care about the block. You've heard about the broken windows theory. That's why Louisville, and I'm complimenting Mayor Fisher, I'm complimenting you, Jim Mims. The broken window theory basically says if you don't fix it, if you don't fix the tagging, the broken window, or the garbage, it'll just get worse. It's the Disney theory of uh, of why um, their actual maintenance cost is so much lower because they immediately have people clean picking up things and you feel guilty about it. Remember with Disney? Everyone says it's so clean. That's what it's all about for the broken window theory. I totally embrace it. And guess what? Republicans, that's a Republican idea. That's a conservative idea. Fix those broken windows. Fix the garbage. Clean it up and everything like that. You can embrace that. Property taxes. Who's paying, paying their fair share? Well, um, you lose uh, a house due to foreclosure, it costs the city a lot of money, lost revenues and so on. Um, you, uh, but one of the things we're finding is that one-way streets do not carry their true value in terms of uh, property taxes. Property taxes will go down. So, and again, the argument is, well, we don't want to raise the property tax. In fact, that's the argument. Multi-lane one-way streets are great because people pay less taxes on it. Well, you have less of a house, too. <laughs> you know? And the people on the two-way street end up paying more, right? It's sort of inequitable. So the idea of comprehensive street plans is that everyone pays their fair share. That's the point. Um, so the average uh, cost of a uh, one-way street in terms of property taxes coming in is $17,000. On a two-way street, the same thing, 42,000. And I believe that's the double for the property taxes. Uh, vacant and abandoned structures and lots. Again, we looked at that using photography. And Josh is going to show us that. Um, there's an average of two vacant uh, parcels on the two-way section of East Breckenridge. And on the one-way, which I showed you earlier, 11 vacant parcels per block on average of lost thing. Pretty devastating. Vacant properties uh, reduce property values and attract crime to the neighborhood. Very simple sociological kind of research. Um, thriving businesses. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, uh, bakery that I, that I go to and everything like that. It's quiet, easy to find, people are shipping around. 
Oh, sorry about that. Now, would you want to go to that business to get your car fixed? I don't think so. Um, traffic counts. This is really, uh, really quite cool. This has been used in our picture. Can I, can I get through that and take your questions after? This, this is being filmed live by NBC News. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big time now. Uh, this is people commuting from the highlands to downtown, okay, at 8 o'clock in the morning. And you can see, if you're a bicyclist, you are absolutely crazy to get on a bicycle in your little outfit, you know, your little leathery outfit, which enrages a lot of people anyway, just to see that. <laughs> so, and they see this guy's butt, the butt in the air, and uh, you're just going, oh my god, that's disgusting. And uh, you're just driving along there. I uh, do drive on that street because I'm interested in the count. Okay? I don't see any bicyclists there anymore. You get hit, and I almost got hit on my bicycle. I stopped doing it, but I almost got hit on my bicycle. Um, and the speed limits were high, and all this stuff about 35 mile an hour speed limits. You go, that sounds pretty good. No, it isn't. 35 miles an hour, it's designed to go 45 miles an hour. 25 miles, it's designed to go about 30 miles an hour. And talk about the inequities. In the highlands where I do live, all those streets are, 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 are posted at 25 miles an hour and are two way. That's very pleasant. Go right up and down the street. And check it. And what's the hottest street right now in the Louisville region? It's Barstown Road. And you, on a, on a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, the traffic is about five miles an hour. It's like uh, South Miami Beach. You ever been to South Miami Beach in the Trickle Park? It's a road show. People just hanging around, doing things, everything like that. People will choose roads. But they don't necessarily choose the distance that's fastest. And of course, if you want to get around downtown uh, New Albany, if you don't want to, you know, no one's out talking about this in the debate. If you want to get from point A to point B, the other side of New Albany, well, just get on the freeway. That's what they built it for. But keep the, the, the surface streets for the people. And slow it down. Roger, how am I doing? Am I speaking? Am I speaking to the choir there? Yeah. Yes, but there, right now there's no incentive to take the freeway. Yeah, it's it, 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 I got the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, health concerns, dirtier air, accidents, children being kept inside, less community, fiscal crime, uh, selling of illegal drugs, you know, prostitution. It's, it's a health issue. One of the things that I find very interesting is that in Baltimore, before the riots and so on, where the riots occurred, guess where they occurred? On the multi-way, one-way streets. And they wanted to change these streets over because it was the same stuff, prostitution, drugs, crime, and all that stuff. And um, they didn't do it in time. And they didn't create the community. That's all that, that, that you need. Um, Washington, D.C., the, the riots in the 60s and the 70s, it was all one-way streets, multi-lane one-way streets. The riots that occurred during the 60s in West Louisville, in one-way streets. You know, there's a correlation. And it's people that build it, these one-way streets. It's human beings that, that make these decisions. Uh, I always point this out because uh, when we talk about the one-way streets, we don't talk about enough about pedestrian and bicycle safety. Now, when we were raised, we were always taught when we get on a bike to go the opposite way of traffic, right? Mm -hmm. To go the opposite way. And uh, that's part of the fixation that this gentleman um, he was mentally ill, had a physical uh, disposition. He needed to get to the, uh, the healing place. He lived four, six blocks away. And he was living in a rooming house. And he needed to get to the healing place, which is a great place, by the way, for healing drugs. And he was killed going the wrong way on a one-way street. And the city actually blamed him. They didn't uh, do anything with the driver. But they actually said, you're going the wrong way on a one-way street. You deserve to die. How dare you go on that one, go the wrong way, and go, instead of going all the way around on a Sunday morning, you would think, oh, you know, I'll be bothered. But that's the thing about one-way streets are not 
multi-link are not good in terms of being friendly to other users who don't drive cars. And I say that pretty powerfully, pretty toughly, but I, I always think it's a tragedy. So, and you read about people um, being struck by cars and so on. Um, by the way, uh, real quickly about the climate here in New Albany, some of you might be hot or like that. Louisville ranks, or the metropolitan region, ranks at the top 25% in terms of pleasant climate, with Santa Barbara being number one. We actually have a pretty good climate. We have our snow, we have our hot days, and everything like that. But it's very bikeable. It's better than Amsterdam. It's better than Denmark. It's better than Minneapolis, where one fourth of the people um, are riding their bikes and so on. But this gentleman didn't deserve to die because he was going the wrong way on a one way street. Um, do one or two way streets, tree counting. Now, this is something else we did. We did tree counting, and basically, this slide says that where there are two way streets, there are much more trees, it's much more pleasant to walk around where there's one way streets, and there's less trees. And we know economists and sociologists, the work I've done is where there's lots of tree foliage and so on, housing prices are much higher. If you take the value of your house, a good real estate appraiser will count the number of trees on your lot and count that if that's an attribute, just as they'll count the garage, the basement, the attic, uh, as all things that are, that are good for them, even the roof structure. Uh, and again, uh, we did a uh, measure along the one way versus the two way, 21 trees uh, per block versus nine trees, so blocks. Um, tree counting, we're not there. Look at that. Can you go back, Josh, and check that out? That says, what does that say to you? It's a pleasant place to go. What does that say to you? Uh, take a run for it, man. Get out of here. Get out of here. Come on. Let's go. Right? And that's scary. It's like you're, you're, you're in the open field. And, uh, so. uh, endorsements for our proposal. Oh, man. Um, Jeff Beck is here. Jeff Beck is Jeff Beck. That would be even cooler for Jeff Beck. For Jeff Beck. Wouldn't that be, the younger folks don't know about Jeff Beck. Uh, what was his big hit song? Loser. Oh, what? Loser. Loser. And, uh, Beck. It's Jeff Beck. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff Beck. older. Oh, yeah. The Yardbirds. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Yardbirds. Uh, anyway, it was pretty good stuff. Um, so. Andres Duane, uh, the master, the king, the man who has made more changes in the physical design around the world, and a, and a friend of mine, I can say that, and, um, you know, endorses this. Jeff Speck, author of Walkable City, and you got the best here, one of them, police officers. We actually, uh, we work with police officers, got, you know, I don't think anyone should be, but we actually work with police officers. And police officers continually tell us that if we can slow down traffic, we can have two-way streets, this is one way to do it. Uh, the police officer in um, <coughs> Covington, Kentucky, where I work as a consultant and so on, will tell you that he says, we've tried everything. Why don't we just try these two-way streets? They want to convert it. And there's an essay by Jeff Speck that he recently actually posted. Is the big enemy right now of this two-way street conversion movement, aside from fears of change, I don't want change, I'm scared of change, and all that, is the state <coughs> saying they own these streets and they don't want to change them. So you could get a, it done. And sometimes the mayor's told me, we'd like to do it, but the state won't allow us to do it. But I believe that there's a little bit of power, especially when you have a governor up there and so on. But the engineers are just across the nation, states, want to see these many multi-link one-way streets stay the same um, and not converted to two-way because they have this ideology that it's faster is better. And of course we know that in life, slower is sometimes faster. Uh, physicians, bicycle activists, neighborhood activists. Good bicyclists, bi good bicyclists that commute, not those people in funny, um, what do we call them? Mama. What do they call mama? 
Oh, I thought you meant the spandex. Middle, middle-aged men in Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Mamas and so on. And, uh, so on. Um, and it's like, who would, you, who would you invite into your house? A mama or a rapper? You know? mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. Um, summary. Two-way streets are great for people and children, local businesses, income, folks, greater safety, health, more money to spend on building parks, pocket parks, and so on, bicycles, and so on. And one of the things we'll, we'll, we'll know, too, in this other research we're doing, is that streets that become bicycle friendly, as in Old Louisville, where they're doing a great experiment at the University of Louisville. Hello, President Nancy. Uh, what's really cool about it is they found out that there's been a income boost and businesses since they've gone to from one-way streets to two-way streets in an area where new businesses have sprouted up. We count at least 20 businesses, which created over 150 jobs, plenty of staying locally, and so on. Um, Paul Goodman. Uh, do you remember Paul Goodman, the kind of drunken social critic out of New York, you know, speed writer, and so on? Um, anyway, Paul Goodman says, I love this quote. It's totally sexist, the man thing. We'll do it anyway. A man, I love this quote, so I'll say it very slowly. A man has only one life, and if during it he has no great environment, no community, he has been irreparably robbed of the human right. What you're seeing in the Highlands right now, and the emerging movement in New Albany, and Spring Street over in Clarksville, and across the nation is that people 